You know, like if you uh, sneak in home late one night and your mum goes, where have you been? And you're like, nowhere. <laughs> I've just been to the shop. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Mike from Job Ready English. We help international students and increasingly lots of students get hired. If you like this video, click like, drop us a comment and make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified whenever we release videos. In the past, the interview series, we break down the process, the questions and a way to think about answering those questions for world famous companies. Today, we're talking about City, the global investment banking behemoth, and their higher view video interview. And we're going to be splitting up this video into four parts. The first part, we're going to talk about motivational questions or why questions. The second part, we're going to talk about behavioral questions, and I'm going to give you three examples of behavioral questions, how to think about why we've been asked them and how to answer them. Part three, we're going to talk about technical or competent commercial awareness questions and what you can expect from that. And stick around until the end in part four, when I'm going to do something that I haven't done for you guys in the past the video interview series, what I'm actually going to screen share with you and talk to you, how can you think about predicting what behavioral or competency questions you might get asked by looking at the job description. And I'm going to do that with you. I'm going to sit there and I had a look at the investment banking analyst role that's currently being advertised in London. And I'm going to tell you, well, these are the questions I think they're going to get asked. And this is why I think that. I think they'll be super interesting for you guys to stick around until the end. So what format can we expect from City's Higher View video interview? Well, we're looking at six to eight questions, two minutes to answer and one minute to respond, which is a good chunk of time either side. Let's start off by talking about part one, motivation questions. Now these are the why questions. And for anybody who watches the rest of my past the video interview series, you'll know that I talk about these all the time. Why, you ask? Because it's so important. Let's talk about the first one. Tell me about yourself. I'm Batman. A good personal introduction. So what are we looking for here? First of all, what are you doing? Hi, my name is Mike and I'm currently a second year math student at Warwick University. That's grounding, that's context, that lets me know what you're up to. The next thing you'd say is, well, what have you done before? Well, I had these A-levels, I come from this school. If you're a master's student, where did you sit your bachelor's? The next thing you would talk about your work experience. So you'd sort of go through systematically and chronologically in the time that you had available, probably 30 to 45 seconds. Then you talk about other experience, extracurricular activities, anything that you feel is really noteworthy, including skills and interests like languages, IT. Finally, try to end your presentation with a hook. So that could be something that you're really proud of, something that you've achieved, something that's just really interesting about you that just gets your audience involved. It could be something like, I really enjoy cooking in my spare time and I cook the best chocolate cake that you could imagine. I am a fantastic violin player. I play badminton at a county level and I have done since I was seven years old. What do I mean by hooking someone in? Well, it's something that we say and the audience kind of goes, oh, that's kind of interesting. Tell me a little bit more about that. You can't just drop that in there and then not say anything else about it. What's next for the motivational questions? Well, they're gonna ask you, why do you wanna work for City and why do you wanna work for this role? So why City? You wanna pick out four or five key facts that you like talking about. It doesn't just have to be revenue, it doesn't just have to be awards or you know male, female, pay gap, that kind of thing, or corporate social responsibility. Always pick things that interest you and that you want to talk about. That's so important when answering questions. And you can do that by looking at their annual report, their quarterly report, the media press pack, just looking at Google News, Bloomberg News. It's so easy to sit there and lock in for 15 minutes, open a fresh Word document and just copy and paste some facts. You have your list and then you can edit those down. 
Next up, why this role? So you want to think about this as a two part question. Number one, why do you want to be an investment banking analyst? Oh, OK, well, the first part will be what do they do? So you demonstrate an understanding of the role. What's their nine to five? What are they going to be doing? Well, they're going to be speaking to institutional clients, working alongside them to create investment opportunities, creating deals, building up a network and so on and so forth. And the second part is what are the skills and experience that you have that would make you good at this job? And guys, this doesn't have to be because you previously were an investment banking analyst. It could be that you're good at Excel, that you've got great leadership qualities, that you enjoy trading in your spare time and so on and so forth. So just some good things to think about. And of course, always, always think about and look at the job description. And if that job description isn't helpful, just copy and paste that job, pop it into Google and you can find somebody else who is giving you a job description where they can say, oh, these are the things that we'd really like you to do. These are the skills that we'd like you to have. You think, great, I'll just use those instead. So let's talk about behavioral questions or skill-based questions. I've picked out three questions for you just to kind of give you a taste and give you an idea about how we would answer these questions using your best stories or best experience. So the first one was, give me a time when you had to work in a difficult team environment and how did you manage to do that? Whenever you get asked a behavioral question, always think to yourself, why are you asking me that question? You know, like if you uh, sneak in home late one night and your mom goes, where have you been? And you're like, nowhere. <laughs> I've just been to the shop. <laughs> like there's, there is an intent. There is a reason why the interviewer, even if it's just a robot, is asking you that question. So here it's basically saying, how do you deal with a difficult or stressful situation? Thinking about that investment banking analyst dealing with, you know, people, demands, deadlines, pressure. What has it been like for you? Maybe you worked in a restaurant. Maybe you served fast food. I know for me, a time when I've had to work in a difficult, a difficult environment was probably the first job I had when I was 16. And I worked in fast food. And how did I manage that? Well, what I did was I just compartmentalized. I just concentrated on my job, made sure I did the best that I could. I listened to what people had to say. I took on board feedback and I tried to get better. I tried to learn from other people. And most of all, I didn't take it personally because sometimes people get stressed and they say things that they don't mean. But one thing that I would always do is when work was done, work's done. It's got nothing to do with me. Give me a time when you faced a challenging situation and how did you handle that? All of you guys have faced challenging situations, whether that be something to do with studies or work or just juggling all the different things that you have to do. Why is this important? Because it's kind of talking about multitasking and organization. And it's making you think about when it's something's challenging, I'm really being taken outside of my comfort zone. You're really forcing me to think I'm going to have to employ some additional resources. I'm not just going to work, coming home, doing the housework. I all of a sudden, you know, for example, the other day I had a tire blow up on the motorway. Did I get really upset? No, I just pulled over to the hard shoulder, called up for roadside assistance, waited there, got the tire changed this morning, and also didn't really get that stressed about it. Why? Because there was nothing that I could do. Me being upset was not going to change that situation. It could be you dealing with multiple deadlines and how you organize your time. It could be you dealing with somebody who's really difficult at work and taking them aside and saying, hey, do you know what, I, I don't, why did you talk to me like that? I really don't like that. I feel like I'm being disrespected. But I want to check in and see, is there something wrong with you? Is there something going on with you? Let me put your needs first and try and figure out what's wrong. Or maybe it's just a case of working around that person because they're just difficult and they're a bit of a dickhead, to be honest. Give me an example where you took your own initiative. Now, I love this question because in so many roles these days, particularly knowledge work roles, where we're basically being, we're using our brains, computers, data to reach better decisions for on behalf and on behalf of our clients. Taking initiative is really like, 
what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean that you're waiting for me to tell you what to do. You're seizing the opportunity, you're getting involved, and you're thinking, yeah, I know what I need to do. And really, all of you guys have done that. Where did the, where did the be in work when you started to, you know, clean down after work or you went that extra mile for a customer or perhaps you, you know, did a little bit extra in a presentation or you had somebody in your group who's a little bit shy and you tried to involve them into the conversation. So that's a way to think about behavioral questions. Guys, don't forget, stick around until the end when I'm going to do a little screen share with you and let you know how we can pick out behavioral questions. Are there any questions that you really struggle with and you'd love an explanation to? Why don't you drop it down in the comments below and, and let me know so possibly we can make a video about it. So finally, I want to talk to you about technical and commercial awareness questions. Now, these didn't come up so much and it really depended on the role but it will give by knowing these questions it's going to give you a really good idea of the specificity that you'll need and actually that a lot of companies are tailoring their application processes to the role so for example an analyst could be asked what are the key factors affecting city and your division Somebody who's applying for investment banking could be asked, talk about a recent merger that you were interested in. Or a markets analyst might say, how would you price a certain futures contract? Now, you'll notice that these are not really difficult questions. But personally, for me, because I don't come from a finance background, I would struggle to answer that as a normal person because I, I don't really know. And what it says is, by understanding the job description and showing a genuine motivation, these are probably things that you would already know. Now, it doesn't mean that you've got to go away and revise and rehearse and go back for everything you've ever learned, but certainly something like going through, you know, a simple finance course or just looking for Investopedia, just making sure that actually you are interested in more and above and beyond than just the money. And finally, tell me about a recent piece of news. This is a question that we've noticed come up more and more for different companies. And why is that? Well, if you want to work in a bank, you really want to be engrossed in the financial markets. Now, I don't mean reading the Financial Times every day, but you could just subscribe to a daily email blast, even a weekly email blast. If you're not that finance literate, I highly recommend starting with somewhere like BBC Business or Reuters, instead of diving straight into the deep, the deep end of a Bloomberg or a CNBC. So join me in the next part for the screen share when I'm going to talk about how can we figure out what behavioral or competency questions might be asked. Welcome to my computer, guys. So what I wanted to do with you is, like I said, I wanted to share with you how can we kind of start to think about so we're having an interview and we know that we're going to be asked some kind of behavioral or competency questions. How can we, to a reasonable degree, predict what those are going to be? And it's actually not that difficult. So I'm on City's website. I just jumped on to have a look today. It is the 20th of May, 2021. This is the only program that's actually open for London. Investment Banking Full-Time Analyst Program. Um, super competitive. So kind of having a look through here, the answers tend to be in the job description. So blah, blah, blah. This is what you do. Knowledge and skills that you need to succeed. Um, your time here will look something like this. We want to hear from you if blah, blah, blah. Um, and this is kind of what we're interested in with City. So they're going, who we think will be a great fit. And I always like to copy and paste this and put it in somewhere where I can read it properly. Maybe I'm just going blind in my old age. So a dedication to learning and passion and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So basically what they're saying is desire to develop a deep understanding of the financial industry. So what question would that be? Tell me about a recent piece of financial news. Um, intellectual curiosity and proactive approach to searching for new and creative ideas. Tell me about a time you creatively solved a problem. Strong communication, planning, and organization skills. So like teamwork, multitasking type question, commitment to personal growth, career and development, including mobility and flexibility. Well, yeah. 
Um, strong desire to learn a proactive building rapport. You know, so that could be leadership, dealing with failure, resilience, and so on and so forth. Now, the reason why I'm pointing this out to you is because sometimes it can be difficult to decode this, and not everything is going to give you something. But basically, it's kind of common sense in my mind. If a company has turned around to you and said, um, hey, Mike, we're really looking for somebody who can do these things, they're not going to turn around and be like, oh, tell me about a time when you travel to the moon. I realize that's really stupid, but I'm using that because... They're basically going to be asking questions around the things that they're looking for. They're not just going to ask you random questions like this is probably about financial news. Um, maybe, you know, you could ask a question about, you know, when you did the right thing or they might ask like an SJT question about a client giving you a, you know, uh, giving you a bribe. Probably not that overt, but maybe, you know, wanting a report early, something like that. You know, talking about integrity and ethical decision making. So time and time again, we, we almost always come back to the job description and why it's so worth just sitting there and trying to decode it. You don't have to decode everything, but a lot of what they're looking for is already there. And you can sit there and kind of figure that stuff out for yourself quite easily. So there you have it, guys. That's how you can kind of decode and figure out what behavioral or competency questions are going to get asked. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like, subscribe, hit that bell, and let us know in the comments what are the other videos that you'd love us to make. See you next time.